Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Place Hand of Fate 2. Really successful on the last mission, lots of good cards earned. As we went through the Empress, we're gonna do High Priestess now. Maybe we've done things a little bass backwards, but that's okay. You know what, we do have the Trickster unlocked. Oh, well, I mean, of course unlocked, but I thought we had to go find them, but uh... Sure, bonus dice. Can I inspect? Yes, okay. Bonus dice, what does bonus dice mean? Optionally, roll an extra dice after missing the dice gambit's target, but lose your companion for three turns. That seems extremely good. Berserker's Charge, when activated, Cold Bjorn performs a charge attack that causes stun and may knock down weakened enemies. Stay close to charge his ability faster. All right. I doubt the Northerner can offer you anything. Time will tell. What do you know, nerd? Equipment. Uh, wait, what, what do we have on this mission? Northern Honor. Do not expect to be welcomed by Northerners whilst treading in their lands. Campfire. Survive Mount Freitas by restoring life at camp. And Tribute. Gain blessings to increase your chances of success. So, um, we know that we have... First off, we can put one, uh, plat in the deck. So we should put Hretha Zyre in. Then, if this has blessings, maybe we want to roll, uh, the Ruby Ring. If I, oh, if I remember correctly, gives us life when we have more blessings than curses. Seems a little weak, but I mean, we don't know what Ring of Food does, right? Yeah, we need to draw it to find out. Uh, if we just want like one of everything, because we can only have five cards, it's like not really very much. I think one sword is fine. We don't even need a shield if we choose to go with this. Maybe we'll try like Armor of Gluttony. I uh, no, 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 let's go pious robes, because it says, you know, something to do with blessings. Add a helmet in here, and, um... I don't know, something new we've never seen before, like maybe a ring of food. Who knows, we might run out of, we might come close to running out of food. Uh, on this one. Fill your deck with encounter cards. We can only put six in this time. We're gonna make a, uh... A bit of a preference towards token cards. So let's start with uh, Clan Eyebright, which is our companions. Can't put Deadly Forest in yet. We'll put in Elder's Gift, which is new. Four more to go. Dude, dare we? Market Thief. We need Malaclips for this one, so we can't take it. Let's take Watchtower. Let's take the Palace Armory, which I assume is going to give us um, the equipment option that we had last time. It's good, so we can self-select a piece of equipment. And, uh, why not fame and shame? I have no idea what it does, but let's do it. Continue. Again, half the fun is not necessarily knowing what the, uh, what your, uh, mission is gonna look like. Yourself once again in the company and seeing whether it works or doesn't work. <laughs> How unfortunate. Okay, two more tokens. You know I want those cards. Now Foothill. Begins. Negotiations on behalf of the Empire. You, you are will see how that story ends. You are assigned a mission to travel across the northern border on behalf of the Empire. General Brandstrom instructs, please don't come back until you've convinced this priestess tart rude to stop ordering raids on our people. He gives you supplies to consume on your trek up the mountain. Try to make sure there's no bears around before you set up camp. Twenty-five food. That is a platy. This woman does not take kindly to heathens, so I suggest you find a way to gain their favor, he says as he sends you off. Collect at least six blessings before meeting the high priestess. Okay. Avalanche. That seems like a terrible start. Nature. Truly wild nature will not tolerate fury in its domain unless it is its own. High up on the mountain, you see the silhouette of a man approaching through the heavy snow. He bellows through the roaring wind. Who dares trespass in the sacred grounds of our priestess? Four of frost. Hidden raiders spring down the mountain with the dexterity of mountain goats. Well. Time to see what the companion can do. I'm assuming we start with the brigand's blades here. Which means we probably should have switched to the sword and board to begin, but again, so be it. We still gotta get a token off of these things as well. Who knows? Maybe it's like, kill 20 enemies in a single mission. 
Kolbjorn. His family lost, his clan turned against him. Kolbjorn has traveled south in search of meaning. When activated, Kolbjorn performs a charging attack that causes stun and may knock down weakened enemies. Stay close to charge his ability faster. Well, he certainly landed some stuns. Hit twice. That worked out pretty well. Okay, so we want to stand close to him to charge this ability faster. I, ch I hit his ability. Unfortunately, I also let myself get hit in the process. Dude, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead, my dude. All right, we lost way too much life on our first encounter. Colbjorn, relax, dude. The enemies are done. Shouldn't have lost 20 life. Gain equipment, though. Ah, okay. Oddly elegant, but possibly effective. It's a helm. After every encounter with a gambit, reveal one random encounter card on this level. Bash an enemy in block or remove their armor to cause a brief stun. We've never had a helmet before, I think, so this is big. Not a cursed, uh, an uncursed helmet, at least. The clash of steel rings out, echoing through the peaks. The mountains answer with a low, ominous rumble as a wall of white rushes towards the melee, sweeping away everything in its path. Gotta hit an 11. Easy money. There's a 15 for you. You seek shelter against a bluff, pressing close to the rock face as the avalanche roars overhead. When the trembling stops, you are miraculously unscathed. Your assailant's weapon juts from the snow. As you near, you realize it's still clenched in his hand, his body buried to the wrist by the avalanche. Let's dig him out. Let's show mercy. You brave the cold and free the raider from his icy grave. He takes a moment to catch his breath and says, You saved me. Though we are enemies by blood, take my blessing and leave me to my thoughts. You gain two fame. And long shot? It's a blessing. Precise dice. Score the exact target value in a dice gambit to draw two equipment cards, then discard this card. Cool. All right. And that's because we beat something with a gambit, we revealed an equipment or an encounter card thanks to our helmet. I see. All right. Blizzard. Careful where one takes refuge. Lose ten Even life immediately. Of Another five life immediately. The climb becomes unbearable as a ferocious blizzard sweeps the mountain. You seek shelter in a cave and desperately fight the onset of frostbite. Try to follow him. I think it's left. The wretched smell of fish meat and stale sweat alerts you to the presence of a bear rousing from hibernation. The ferocious beast bears its teeth and swipes at you with giant paws. Oh, another five life. You flee the cave having barely survived the savage attack. Luckily, the blizzard has passed. Kolbjorn forages for firewood, saying, This log is dry enough for you to set up camping for the night. Access the campfire at any time between encounters. It can be used to consume food, trade, or review your mission. And, oh, okay. That's what we got next, then. No way of getting around that. We don't need to camp. And Not so yet. we see the home of the northerner and his reasons for leaving. Kolbjorn returns to his home village to partake in toil, the ritual of cleaning his people's ancestral grave mounds. He invites you to accompany him. Uh, of course, requires one blessing. Clan Ibright's village, hidden in the forests of Mount Freitas, is a burned-out husk. You see no inhabitants within the collapsed walls and fallen roofs. Kolbjorn leads you through the trees to the grave mounds, a flat, snowy field dotted with body-sized hillocks. A few villagers are here, kneeling by the cairns in prayer. You realize they are all either old or enfeebled. Your stout companion kneels before three graves. They look fresh. The grass has yet to grow on them. He empties a flask of Aramor spirits over the mounds and lets a blessing fall onto the cold earth by them. He motions for you to do the same. Goodbye, Longshot. I hardly knew ye. You kneel on the cold, hard ground beside Kolbjorn as he bends his head in prayer. The tranquility is shattered by a jagged rock bouncing off your companion's back. You draw your weapon and turn to see an old northerner woman bent over with age, clutching a basket of rocks. Fierce hatred burns behind her eyes. Get out, get out of here, betrayer, laugh burner. The old northerner tears her hair in grief as she continues flinging rocks. Kolbjorn flinches as the stones rebound off his flesh, but does not move to defend himself. 
A group of villagers gather around you. They do not join in, but they do not intervene either. Let's see what happens, dude. I'm not gonna push my culture on them. The barrage continues until the snow is stained with blood and the woman is on her hands and knees weeping uncontrollably. An elder, his hand wreathed in bone and blossom, steps forward. His wrinkled fists clenched, clenched with anger. Why have you returned? Colbjorn waves a massive hand at the three grave mounds. Your duty was to die for this clan or your hearth, but you were too cowardly to do either. Why couldn't you do it? His stern tone breaks into a sob. I had a daughter! Your sons! They burnt everything! All because you could not die for us! Uh, Colbjorn merely stares blankly into the distance. <laughs> Appeal to their mercy, I guess? 14. I thought it was on two dice. Okay, keep the six, keep the five, re-roll the one. We're gods. Didn't even need to use the companion. The villagers of Clan Ibright consider Colbjorn's somber stoic form and feel some pity. The Elder sighs. We have nothing. Only anger drives me now. Betrayer Colbjorn, prove yourself in the Horforce trial. Prove you are worthy of dying for Clan Ibright again. Not it's done. a token. Was it worth a blessing? I'm gonna say yes. Blizzard. Well, it's Blizzard and Avalanche. Let's start with the Avalanche. With the least of notice, the very lands beneath your feet can slide away. Life is filled with surprises. So we, oh, I should have changed equipment again. They stopped telling me to change equipment because they're like, you should know by now. Fair. Um, but I mean, you'll still get the job done. All right, run in there, dude. You got it. Free attacks for all. Thank you very much. All right, one down, and his body disposed of. Even better. Okay, that was poor on my part. This guy's got a charge ready, but we probably also will never need it again. Whoa! Well, that's one way to do it. Again, got hit more than I'd like. Might put us in like one of the tensest spots we've been in so far. Gain equipment. Ring of food, so optional. Much magic comes down to simple needs in the end. Don't you find? Optionally discard any non-food gain card to receive plus two food. We don't need it. We got 26 food, but we didn't know that coming into this. Uh, discard this card to gain two food? Absolutely not. No. I want that gold, dude. The clash of steel rings out, blah, blah, blah. Causes an avalanche. I'm assuming we see the... Oh, first we have the avalanche roll. Reroll everything but the five. You need a three and a three. Ah, uh, it'll do. Five and a one. You seek shelter against a bluff, so we succeeded. Um, and we're gonna dig him out. Again, it gives us two fame. And a blessing. Heroic sacrifice. Prior to combat with two or more monster cards, optionally discard a basic monster card, but lose your companion for three turns. No idea. Sure. So we've revealed our last encounter. It is the ascension up the mountain, as we expected. Let's try the blizzard. Kind of scary, though. Cold, men become desperate. So we lose 15 life no matter what. A 20 life? Together, even through the worst. Come on, we got this one. No huge failures, please. <sighs> lose another 10 life. All right, we're going we're gonna to have to be strong uh, on the way up here. Tell you what, we're going to camp. Campfires will always offer warmth and heat. But they also change with each challenge. Be prepared. A figure appears from out of a swirl of frost and snow. It is a northerner. I come in peace, he says. I'll make the pilgrimage to the high priestess. I mean you no harm. Without waiting for approval, he slumps down beside you and warms his hands by the fire. My clan's village is only several days' walk from here. Colbjorn frowns sadly. Does mean we can trade with him? I don't want to sell any of these. Um, what do you got to buy? Ooh, I would like to, but we don't have the cash. Um, tell you what. In that case, 
I'm gonna cook some food and eat it so I can heal up here. Maybe get up to like 70 HP. Can live with that. It has been many years since I saw priestess from the high priestess. <laughs> since I saw wisdom from the high priestess. Colbjorn pauses for a moment. She will not look favorably upon me. Sure, whatever. Let's break camp. You sleep through the long cold night. In the morning, you pack your things and continue your climb up the mountains. Kind of a rough the start here. In itself pushes you back. A sudden blizzard slows your progress through Mount Freitas. The bitter winds pierce your skin like shards of glass. Ascent. All right. Which Blessed brew. I will tolerate. They have at least stepped into the streams of power that magicians call home. As you ascend the snowy Mount Freitas, you happen upon a cottage with pungent smoke wafting out of the chimney. A frail old lady sweeping snow off the path beckons you to come in. You'd better go bearing blessings if you want to get on the high priestess good side. I'm fixing a batch right now if you'd like a taste. If I've got it right this time, you can take it to her, she says, stirring the cauldron. Colbjorn bows. Uh, where do you better have your poisons? The old lady chuckles. I have some of that too, but it's thanks to my blessings that I have such keen hearing, she says. There's one piece of equipment, two blessings, and a curse. Oh! Oh! You take a sip of the putrid potion and feel your stomach churn. I knew I shouldn't have substituted the cloud berries for bulk berries, she says, comforting you. Choose the righteous path and you'll find blessings on your way, I'm sure. You step outside into the blistering cold and continue up Mount Freitas. Bomber dude. Okay, so there's our exit. An Watchtower. to better understand these lands, perhaps. On the edge of the Empire, far from the capital, sits a lonely watchtower. You approach with caution, knowing that few travelers are allowed near. Halt! Calls a soldier as you approach the tower. None may cross the border from the northern lands into the Empire. Let's go sneaky. You return hours later as night approaches. As you scramble through the undergrowth, you hope their scouts don't spot you. Twelve. Doable. Easy money. You scale the tower without incident. You look to the east and west. You gain two fame. You look to the north and south. Ooh, we got platies, boys. You continue your journey. So we have to go through the blizzard to try to catch the thief. Here we begin to see the potential of cards based around fame. Raiders have just forced them from your deck and into your hands. You can begin to exploit their power. Raiders have destroyed our village, the Elder explains in a hushed voice. They were searching for this. He draws a weapon from his cloak and hands it to you. The dealer draws a platinum equipment card. That's Hurethos Iron, dude. A mighty weapon for a mightier warrior than But you, you need 20 weapon. fame to wield it still. Okay, I understand. Thank you, though. You gain 8 fame. You may not have the will to yet bear this gift, but in time, I trust you will come to find its truth, he continues. May this weapon bring you better fortunes than it did our people, and may their sacrifice be your gain. Well, I don't really want to do Blizzard, so instead, we'll do every temple, temple Prayers. Crumbled into the dust, more's the pity. The Temple of Divine Providence provides blessing in, in exchange for a simple gold donation. Six gold, easy money. What do we want? We don't know what any of these are. Um, I think we want something to do with dice. Because we want to make sure we pass every uh, gambit. This seems to do with food. No idea what Beggar's Charm is for. Gambler's Banquet. I don't know. Maybe the more food you got, you get extra dice. Divine Intervention. Change the value of a single dice. I don't know. I'm going to try Divine Intervention, I think. Oh, you can actually see what they are. After all your rerolls, reroll your lowest dice. That seems great. Gain up to 20 gold in the beginning of a new map if you have less than 20 gold. If your max life is less than 150, you may discard food, gain, or equipment cards to receive plus 5 max life. Receive plus 15 life for every gold gain card you receive. Uh, that seems like really good if you're low on HP. Receive plus 4 food ever after every dice gambit. Also seems decent, but I think for our purposes right now, we'll roll with uh, a bonus reroll. We have to try this blizzard, dude. I know we get hurt immediately, but... That's what camping's for, I guess. Try to follow one. He's done it. 
When the howling winds ease, you clear the snow from the cave entrance to discover the dark clouds have passed. Colbjorn forges for firewood, saying this log... Right, right, right. That's it? So we actually never want to do blizzards. I understand. We got this one, dude. We already know what happens in Market Thief. We just gotta beat some gambles. Let's start. Oh! One day, Market Thief. One day, your coins will be mine. You're a rascal, Market Thief. You're the hottest boss in the game. Will you push on, despite nature itself? Absolutely. Dude, we need way more blessings. Old witches. I have a fondness for them. But I would not trust them. Further up the mountain, the blizzard becomes so intense you barely see the tiny cottage engulfed in snow. An old lady beckons you in. I've received word from my sisters, Hawk, and have been expecting you. I may not be as skilled as her, but this blessing potion I've whipped up is my best yet. Do you think it's good enough to take to the hard priestess? She says, blowing the steam off a simmering bowl of thick liquid. We got this one, dude. We have got this one. Far right. Second wind. In combat, boost life to 75. When life drops below 25, then discard this card. Seems good, but I never want to discard the card because we need the blessings to make it into combat, with, or to make it to the final part of this boss anyway. Or at least to get the gold token instead of just the silver boy. You take a sip of the aromatic potion, hit the three-wheel motion, and feel a warm, fuzzy feeling flowing through your body. Looks like my recipe is a success. I'm sure the high priestess will appreciate this one. You thank the old lady and continue up Mount Freitas, paying no heed to the brewing blizzard. Dude, this helmet is actually very good. So that's where we need our blessings. Had a feeling. The climb becomes unbearable as a ferocious... You know the you know the deal. I think it's far right. <sighs> Can't tell if we saw it or if we just got lucky. Come on, no no blizzard. Ah, okay. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get the blessings, dude. We need to stack our deck with more uh, blessing cards or something. To reward itself, and the rich become yet more wealthy. Okay. Peasants are forgiven from entering the palace armory. Turn away or be sent to the dungeons. You require sixteen fame. It was Fame and shame. That necessitated these additions to the game, you understand. I knew you were approaching and tailored things around your lust for fame. You follow the sound of hammering into a town hall. Inside, a tiny man stands atop a stool, chipping away at a row of, mar row of marble sculptures. Impressive, is it not, sir? Wait, impressive, is it not? Sir Malafowl of Kader is a great patron of the arts. You could be too. We don't need that much fame. I would like, we know we need some. Whatever, I'll give him 20. It'll it'll take us over 20 fame, which will allow us to wield the good weapon uh, and also make it to the palace armory, I'm sure. Oh, we gotta succeed though. Let's go. So we can wield the ax, please do. With what confidence you choose your tools and faith in your powers. Sometime later, you return to see the finished product. An exact replica of you stands in the town hall among sculptures of nobles. I guarantee such a status symbol will earn you great admiration from the people of the Empire. You gain 12 fame. And... No bl oh. There's no blessing to be gained from Blizzard, so... I can't even go to the palace armory anymore. Uh-oh. I think we got problems. A grand opportunity for yes. you to take whatever pleases you. They didn't take my gold from that last one, day. so... I will make a donation and pick a blessing. Um, we'll try Gold Zealot. Every time we gain gold, we get life. And then we'll go to what might be the exit. Now Blessed the Summit. Are you ready to face the priestess of her people? I think we're only going to get a silver here because we don't have the blessings the required. Has requested, or will you turn and flee? The winds clear the dark clouds to reveal the spire of a ritual house protruding from the summit. You press on through thick snow to find the wooden structure adorned with spoils of war. Enter. As you enter the great hall, the towering arched doors swing open with a heavy creak. A goddess in a velvet robe enters, accompanied by raiders. Kolbjorn throws himself down to the floor in reverence. The giantess glances at him lazily. What have we here? A northerner and one of the Empire. What did you bring me to appease my wrath? 
Yeah, only four blessings? What a pitiful effort. With the flick of her wrist, bolts of lightning strike you. For not bringing enough blessings, you have failed to win the gold token. You still have a chance to defeat this mission. It hurts. Even if imperfectly. The giant has collapsed, the sound ringing in the silent cold hall. Ha! This small thing survived it! Impressive, but if you wish to speak to me of a treaty, you must prove yourself against my champion. Oh, that looks hard. Uh, One-handed weapons are recommended against northerners. Sorry, no. That won't be necessary. Sacrifice your companion to discard a monster card? No. Not, not to discard a frost trapper, at least. The dude is gonna stun all of the enemies right off the bat. So we botched this one a little bit. We need to take things to give us more chances of blessings, and I guess probably not discard the blessing uh, to save Kolbjorn. But we got a token for that, so... Berserker weapons are imbued with ice that slows their enemies' movements and attacks. Let's go, boys! Not a good start. But when you're good, you're good. Actually stood no chance. Waggle, waggle, waggle. Need a waggle. I'm gonna need a waggle here. All right, so he's slain. Oh, that's what I was hoping for. Multiple strikes. Get dusted. Extremely so. He's not ready for another attack yet. Dead as heck. Easy money. Alright. Still quite a bummer. We weren't able to get the gold token. But a fun mission nonetheless. We'll have to replay that one at some point. On camera or otherwise to get that gold token. Even though you failed to bring me your offering, I'm impressed with how you wield your sword. Now hear my terms. The High Priestess draws herself up, a towering figure draped in fur and wrath. The North will never bend to the Empire, blood for blood for blood. Those are my terms, small one. Let your leaders hear it and quake. With that, you make a quick descent to relay the message back to General Brandstrom. And we get silver. It hurts. It stings me. Get some new equipment. New encounters, some of which have tokens associated. We can start with extra food. We can start with an axe, which has a token. We can start with a sword. And this is uh, for our companion quest, I think. For convincing Clan Eyebright to give Colbjorn another chance. Ooh, it's a Brimstone card. Or Frost Trial. So there's like multi-stage quests for each companion, I guess. I'm not too salty. We made progress, like, not just by beating the mission, but also by getting some of the side quests done. The Market Thief continues to elude us because he's a god. And we didn't even get dialogue after that. Like, the dude's embarrassed to even know us, I guess. But hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of Hand of Fate 2. If you did, play the game for yourself. It's on Steam. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Uh, for now, thanks for watching. Click the like button if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for your support on the series so far. I'll see you tomorrow with another Tangled Tale in the Hand of Fate saga.